Good morning all, nice tidy desk. Uh, no, not really. So it's post bag. So this one is an expansion board module and it's worth one US cent. So this is uh, coming quite recently. I think I know what it is. Let's take it out. Well, it's a panel and it's got um, a USB socket embedded in there and a sort of handle at the other end. Yes, it's a solar panel. So this is a 10 watt solar panel. Really? I mean, this one is a 16 watt. It's got three uh, sections. So <laughs> it seems unlikely that this is 10 watts. Uh, let's just get my 20 watt panel off the wall. So this is um, a 20 watt solar panel. I keep it uh, hanging like a picture on the wall. So it seems unlikely that this is 10 watts, 10 watts, 20 watts. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, so outside we've got, uh, yeah, a little bit of sort of low hazy sun and it's certainly lighting up this uh, one watt LED torch head. Now on the back, uh, there's also a red LED underneath that uh, sort of expanded polystyrene. So solar panel, a uh, little meter there, power bank to try and draw as much current as we can, power as we can. What are we getting? Oh, it's difficult to read, isn't it? Oh, well, just on cue, the sun's come out and we've got, oh, look at that, half a watt. Yeah, half a watt, five volts, 4.6 actually, it's a bit low. Yeah, half a watt we're getting out of uh, this 10 watt solar panel. Now, maybe that's not completely surprising. The sun is very low. Uh, it's quite hazy. There is cloud. So we're not going to get uh, 10 watts, but no, I don't think that's a 10 watt solar panel, is it? But it's cute and I like it and it's self-contained and it's got a little USB output on it and I wonder what's under that box. Maybe one day I'll snap that off and have a look. Yeah, I like this solar panel. It's going to be uh, fun to play with. Now it's got, um, these aren't silicon uh, panels or cells. It's quite flexible. You can bend it. It's the same um, sort of what they call sun power cells that are in those folding solar panels. I don't know, are they SIGS, uh, C-I-G-S, something like that? Um, what is that? Copper, indium, gallium, diselenide, I think, or something like that. So here it is on eBay. It's a 10 watt, 5 volt portable solar power panel charger for Samsung iPhone tablet pad. Uh, $11.79, free shipping, and this came from CZB672-1960. And uh, you do also get a set of four of these rubber suction cups, which you can stick in these rivets, presumably, so that you can stick it to a window. Right, next up is this one, electronic parts, a, f a more realistic $6 on this one. And look at this. It sticks to my plier, so I think we know what's in here. And it is... Hmm... It sticks to my pliers through all this padding. I'll open that. And uh, yeah, this one is neodymium magnets, but uh, these have actually got countersunk holes, two countersunk holes, one at each end. Actually, I'd quite like it if it had just one hole at one end and was solid at the other because my plan for these is to stick these things together. The idea is to uh, put a magnet sort of between two... Oh, that doesn't work very well at all, does it? The idea was to put it between two batteries and uh, be able at the same time to connect a wire onto there. But they don't seem to be very keen to connect like that. Uh, maybe if I turn that around so the positive sits on the not countersunk bit. Yeah, they seem quite determined to... That keeps sticking to that battery. Uh, quite determined to sit at the centre of these uh, magnets rather than sit at the end, which is why I wanted it. I wanted to sit there, but it doesn't want to do it. It keeps turning... Go away! It keeps uh, bending around at an angle, so I'm not quite sure why that is. Perhaps I need some even longer ones where the hole extends out further 
and then I can attach my wires uh, to those so that I can uh, connect up little charging circuits, that was the original plan, uh, to charge three cells in series all at the same time. Yeah, I mean that probably would still work. I can get um, a bolt in there, a countersunk bolt and a little um, connector on there sitting on there just outside of the uh, diameter of this cell. So yeah, that probably will work, but maybe I'll keep looking for uh, something else that's going to do this. Right, well those can join my uh, collection of magnetic items stuck to this filing cabinet. And so these are these. Uh, five pieces N35 block two hole fridge magnet, countersunk rare earth neodymium. 30 by 10 by 5 millimeters, uh, $3.99 for five pieces, free shipping. And these came from Alice Womano 1983. And uh, finally, it's this one which came from a UK seller. Uh, yes, it's these two little things. And uh, we can see what they are from this, uh, and indeed where they came from basicmicro.co.uk. Um, so these are two Murata NK0512 uh, 1 watt isolated DC to DC converter. So you put in 5 volts and you get 12 volts out. So these are little boost converters, but they're isolated. So they must be transformer based. There must be a transformer in there. Um, so there's no sort of electrical connection between the input terminals and the output terminals. Um, these really are very tiny indeed. Let's zoom right in, see if the camera will refocus. Oh, look at that. Um, so yes, I mean, they're not much more than about a centimetre wide. Uh, 5 volts in, as I say, 12 volts out. We can probably get a data sheet for these. I wonder if we could um, test these briefly. Right, pin 1, minus V in. Pin 2, plus V in. Pin 3, minus V out. Pin 4, plus V out. Excellent. Let's connect it up. Right, let's switch on. That's about 5 volts on that uh, pack of inner loops. Uh, mm, 15 volts coming out. That's a bit high. That's meant to be uh, 12 volts. That's interesting. Okay, uh, well, let's try the other one. Uh, the other one is 16.3 volts. They're not very well regulated, are they? Um, uh, right, the voltage is a little bit lower with a couple of one microfarad tantalums, one across the input, uh, one across the output. Let's take that one out. I hope these things don't mind being plugged live. Let's make sure I get this aligned correctly. Let's see what this one does with the tantalum capacitors. No, still 15.9 volts. That's quite a high output. Uh, these are meant to be 12 volts. Uh, I thought I'd just check the input voltage. And it is, yeah, pretty close to 5, 4.96. That's well within the spec, I think. So that's weird that the output voltage is so high. So I think this is the uh, item here. It's the voltage set point accuracy. And it just says C tolerance envelope. And I believe these are the tolerance envelopes. This is the 3.3 volt output type. These are all other types. Um, I don't quite know why we've got three lines here, but even the worst case is um, plus 10%. Well, I'm getting about plus, I don't know, 30, 40% uh, down to minus seven and a half percent under typical, under different load conditions. Uh, so I don't know why I'm getting that high voltage. I mean, it doesn't matter massively um, for my application, which is this, this is my little MOSFET driver where I'm using 5 volts um, to drive the input of these two opto-isolators, well, that 5 volts can be tapped off and sent to uh, this little uh, step-up converter. And then on the output side, I've got a separate power supply, this 9-volt battery, um, driving the gate of the MOSFET. Well, I, I wanted to use the 12-volt output from this to do that. Well, I mean, the gate of a MOSFET is quite happy up to about 20 volts. So it doesn't matter that this is 15 or 16 on the output, uh, if anything, that might help a bit, drive the gate um, voltage a little bit higher. So I still think this might work. And the idea is to get rid of this bulky battery and just put this tiny little um, isolated converter on here, because of course this is isolated 
by virtue of these optos it'll also have a 5 to 12 volt step up uh, so that this thing is self-contained and can run off the 5 volt input doesn't have to run off a separate uh, battery supply so these are 2 times Murata NK 0512 SC 1 watt isolated DC to DC converter 5 volts to 12 volts DC RS232, don't know what that means um, uh, two pieces for £9.99, that's £5 per unit, plus £1.99 postage, and these came from Basic Micro UK. And so these are today's post bag items. I didn't really want to put these magnets directly down on the solar panel. I can't imagine that strong magnets would actually damage a solar panel, would they? I don't think so. Um, anyway, I want to say a big thank you, uh, as usual, to um, Patreon supporters. If you'd like to become a Patreon donator, then you can click uh, this link here. A couple more videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And uh, this image here takes you through to subscribing to my channel. Cheerio!